This video is meant to help you uh, get around the, uh, the course site, which is found in our learning management systems. You might hear it called LMS. And what you're looking at right now is the CUNY site, the City University of New York site, about you know, the course, the, our learning management systems. We used to have this thing called Blackboard, which if you're a returning student, you know about. If you're a new student, well, maybe you know about, maybe you don't. You're not even going to have to worry about. But if you're a returning student, you used to go into Blackboard no longer starting this semester. Well, that is, and it's when I'm recording it, the fall of 2024. All of our courses are going to be in Brightspace. So I want to give you a little leg up on helping you, first of all, find out where you get information about Brightspace, how you log on to it, and then I just want to show you the general design of the way I work in my courses so it'll help you navigate through. Okay, so here you see our, 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 two, um, you know, our two learning management systems, the old one, the new one. Now, the way to get on that, there are two possible ways. Let's start by going to cuny.edu. You can see I'm typing that into my browser and right over here. And then we have log on. So and if we look at log on and you might see it a little bit different, but if you go down, there's log on to Brightspace and Blackboard, which is going to take you on to a list screen that we just looked at. And um, which let's go over there, but let me back up and show you something. Now I'm in a pretty high resolution screen at this point. Sometimes if you're in a lower resolution screen, which I'm going to try to emulate as you're, as, as you're watching, um, wrong way. Okay, you'll end up with something looking at something like this. From there, you'd have to go to menu, log on, and then CUNY first, you've already used Blackboard. If you click on that, and you'll end up Brightspace down here. But we'll get we'll get back to, we'll get back to that in a second. Log on to Brightspace. You're going to want to click on that, and you will get into the core. You'll have to use your login credentials, not mine, your own. The same thing you use to get into um, CUNY first to register for the course and your password that only you know. So that's the way you would get to it from the CUNY website. If you can't remember the CUNY website, I'm going to save. Well, you can always go to KBCC, Kingsborough Community College, dot CUNY, dot EDU, and we'll go to the, the Kingsborough site. From the Kingsborough site, you see we have these click quick links. So if we quick, we that's easy enough for me to say. If you click on quick links, then you go down the list, you'll see something called Brightspace. Blackboard's no longer to be found. Any, oh, sorry, Blackboard is to be found. You click on Brightspace, and here in this section, it will give you information about doing various things. Brightspace logon is where you'd want to get to. And the nice thing about this is if you're looking for some help, and whether you've come in this way or not, we have tutorials, student handbook, student tutorials. And one thing you should know is for the people who like to look at their courses on their iPhones or Androids or you know their smartphones, there's something called the Pulse Application Usage Instruction. That's going to tell you how to use it there. But what you're going to want to do first is to log on to Brightspace. Again, you're going to come in there, and depending on which of my courses you're in, you're going to end up coming to something that looks like, give me a second, and I hope we're still here, like this. And let me make sure I have a something that's helping me control making this video, but it might stand in the way of what you're seeing. And this is typically what courses look like. Here, I'm doing this in the fall of 2024, so here's what my criminal justice course looks like I have two sections of it and here's what my ethical problems in business and society otherwise known as business ethics and I have three sections of that by the way I use this for in-person classes and for online sections and both of these courses I have 
at least one in-class uh, section and one online course. And I'll just stick with this one because you'll see it's set up almost identically. The first thing that you'll come into, well, you'll see there's an announcement on the side that says this course is not yet ready for students. That's about to change because I'm about to. Once I finish doing this video and changing a few other videos, I will be making the course live for you. It's still in August before the semester started. You've got plenty of time to get started, but I'd like to at least let you see things two weeks in advance of what's going on. Okay, so now we have course information and course content. If we click on course information, we will come in here and notice what you have. Well, it's telling me 100% complete. Don't worry about that. That's for me. It says course information over here. You, I hope you can see where I'm moving the cursor. Download. God knows why you'd want to download this stuff, but if you want to download the whole thing, it seems it, it allows you to. I'd rather stop you from downloading certain things. but And then we have course syllabus, which you, in which you're going to find the course syllabus. And remember, the syllabus is kind of the document that tells you everything that you need to know about the course. We'll be going over a that in the first week of the course, probably in the second section. But that's, that's an important document. Then there's a video explaining you how to look at the next thing, which is... And maybe I should show you if I click on course syllabus, the course syllabus will show here and you'll be able to look at it. But let me let me now go back to course information. And the next thing, if we click on it, it's going to be show you a video explaining. And notice we have this little start thing. Watch on YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube. This explains how to read the course schedule and dates and we then have the actual course schedule and due dates it's going to pop up the same way the syllabus popped up and I keep both of my courses or at least this semester I'm teaching business ethics and criminal justice ethics a total of five sections but I keep them all on the same calendar you want to know why that do that because it makes it easier for me so I don't make fewer mistakes and confuse you less but there's, there's what you see. And even under course information, I also, depending on your course, I usually have some books that are probably, it, it's, they're not required. They're optional books, but here are a couple that are helpful. It's a philosophy course, so this is kind of an interesting book for you to help you understand what philosophy is. And it's the cartoon introduction to philosophy. I thought this was a crazy idea at first, but when I looked at it, I actually saw it has great content. There's a book you can also buy, and by the way, these are links to Amazon, uh, Hornbook Ethics by Charles Cardwell. And in the case of my business ethics course, I have a concise introduction um, that you might want to buy. They're not expensive books. Yeah, they are not required. If you're having trouble, I sometimes recommend that you get uh, if you get them. But that's what's going to be in your course information. Okay, so now let's go back. To, I mean, we, over here you see on the side of Brightspace, because notice we are now into Brightspace. It, it always tells you overview. I don't know what that actually shows us. Big bookmarks, we don't have. Course schedule, um, that is di a little different than this, uh, than this course schedule. That's when I have everything in there, and I'm still populating stuff from Blackboard into Brightspace, so this course schedule up there is not quite working. Table of contents will show you everything else that's available to you. In fact, let me click on it and show you. We go to table of contents, you know, course information, course content, and it just shows you week one because that's all that's available to you right now. But let us go back or let us now see that was the table of contents. We can use the back button on the browser. Oops, back again. Eventually, well, okay. We're back to core, where we were in course information. Let's just see. I've never done this before. Let's see where overview takes us. Okay, welcome to da da da. Okay, it just tells you a little bit about about this se section. So now that's how we got in. Now we're going to click on the top and we're going to go back to the. This is the home page of the course. This is where it lands you at first. And so we looked at course information, and now course content is going to work in a very similar fashion. If we click on course content and for these two courses, most of my other ones very similar at the beginning. And you can see we have, we go into 
getting started introduction assignments. Here you can see on the little menu on the side, we now have course content, week one. And under that week, this is the topic. This is the, the top, these are the topics for week one. Getting started introduction assignments, that's what you're looking at. What is a moral dilemma and how do you solve one? Okay, and syllabus explanation, we'll go through that in the first week. And the idea of, of the way you should work through this is you start on the, this is every week's going to have its own topic. And you start going through from the top through the bottom. If you're taking me in person, you don't have to watch all these videos. It might not be a bad idea to watch and review it. You'll learn a little bit more. But the videos are the information that I'll be going over in class. But you're still going to have to come here because if you can see, even in this first section, getting started introduction assignments right over here. And I'm missing one assignment on this one. Um, assignment number two. There is an assignment number one, which I haven't put in this course yet, which is why it's not live. Um, in fact, I'll just pop over to my criminal justice ethics because that one actually shows the assignment. Okay, so here you see you're in the topic getting started and um, you're, you can see assignment number one is right over there. Okay, so actually I just got a phone call that I had to take, so uh, I paused it for a second. I think it works right. Okay, so we see in here, there are assignments. So even if you're in the in-person class, you have got to get onto Brightspace and go in here and look in there. Now, there's some way of setting up a, a checklist of what you need to do. I still haven't figured out how to do that, but it's still before the semester starts. You might actually see the checklist, and I'll figure it, it might be helpful for you so you know if you've missed assignments. But you'll see there will be assignment, another assignment, you know, something about success. And then assignment number three, introduce yourself. You'll start writing that in class if, you do, if you're in an uh, in-person section. And if not here, what I'm asking you to do is go on and you'll go into a discussion or a discussion forum or a discussion board as they used to be called. Now I just call discussions and you will go and uh, write a brief introduction to yourself. There are instructions. When you click on that, you'll see instructions. But the idea is you're going to work your way through that. And then once you're done with that, you keep going down the list week one, getting started. And sometimes you'll have different topics under the weekly session. Sometimes you'll just have to have it. In fact, if you can see, um, well, I actually, I don't. Let me go back. If I go back to week one and you will look at the top, say I have a welcome message. And then we have the stuff getting started. And you just keep scrolling down. Then I have what is a moral dilemma? How do you solve one? And here's a video. You'll hear that in class. But for the people who are even doing it in class, and I'll let you write a little bit of this in class, I want you to post it because the idea is I'd like all three sections of my business ethics or two sections or however many sections, regardless of which course I'm teaching, to be able to work together because it gives you more, uh, you know, more, more of an opportunity to interact with other students, uh, whether it's online, whether they're online students or in-person students. Okay, next, then there'll be a syllabus explanation. Um, there's going to be a, a video navigating Blackboard. Well, you'll start working down there. But in any event, that's the important thing. That's the way you get into, into Brightspace, and that's the way you can get started working. Uh, I want to wish everybody success and get started as soon as possible because the one key to success, and you'll hear me say this numerous times, is to make sure you're doing all the work and doing it on time and promptly because the people who do that end up doing the best. And even the people in in-person courses who sometimes miss things or you miss a class, you'll be able to get the lectures online, you know, and that doesn't absolve you from coming to class, by the way. Okay, well... Have a good semester. Get going with the work. Take care. Bye.